Hi YouTube, hi guys. <laughs> uh, welcome back to another video. I'm going over um, a presentation that we gave uh, to SIG as part of the UNSW Algathon uh, coding competition this year, uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, we got some footage of that. I was going to review it now, upload some higher quality slides so you can see the slides better. Just a bit of context. Uh, our team got second place uh, this year. Uh, we finished second place. Um, I have participated before and I was part of last year's winning team um, and it was good to go and participate again. Uh, happy to have gotten the top scoring algorithm this year, uh, which was great. And uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so um, hi everyone. Uh, we're algorithmically based. Uh, in terms of the name conception, I'm not really sure where that came from. I'm sure there's like a lot of the out there. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, you know, brief, brief explainer. So like, first of all, we want to go first. So we got to have a letter A, so algorithmically. And then um, and then I thought, you know, we're based, like it's based in algorithmic processes, you know, it's, it's close enough, right? So we have algorithmically, like the base, you know, you get an idea. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so I'll start off. My name's Christina, and I'll give a general overview about what um, about what exactly we did or what we started off with, um, and then we'll be followed by um, Holly. Um, Holly, who was in charge of the analysis, and a more like technical overview of the project, uh, going through the trend and limitations of the data that we were given. Uh, then um, I guess Max is where everything like, all the at. Uh, where he's going to talk about the strategy, implementation, um, and also more importantly, the considerations we made, as well as the limitations again of the actual, um, the actual physical, the actual code. And finally, um, I have to wrap up with the conclusions and the findings. So, so yes, before talking about the strategy, I guess like all the other teams, uh, we had to look at the data first, right? And then, so this included data wrangling, visualization, all the stuff we kind of like and don't like. Um, but yeah, we particularly looked at more simplistic approaches, hopefully. Uh, we didn't want to overcomplicate things um, given the relationship between the different instruments we were given. Um, taking that into consideration, we looked at exponential scribbling, um, error, identification of particular trends that are slightly more time later, and considerations of seasonality, uh, repetition, any other patterns. Um, and then, yeah, we went back to the basics, weighted average um, to past observations, and uh, we then extrapolate to hopefully look uh, at future results using uh, historical data. Um, yeah. So, it's fine. Um, uh, that's the sort of first point to take the data, bring the data, look at the data. It's essentially given to us as everyone knows prices and time. So, basically, I thought given that it was a time series, I try and bring a model. Try and sort of push it where I did. Yeah, so I wanted to use the Arena model to try and sort of figure out some correlation if it's you know correlated with itself over time. I was going to move before that's going to cloud. And then from there, we went on to looking at the correlation between actual machines themselves. Um, there was some correlation that was demonstrated by the sort of yellow tiers down in the um, diagram. Um, but we couldn't actually fit anything really to that correlation that, that we, we liked and it was um, pretty good. So it was sort of like a hit and miss of that. So we sort of scrapped both those ideas. The next idea was to look at the volatility between the days uh, and then try and mean reversion off of that. Um, we have both months, month data approximately and uh, day data. Uh, again, that was another sort of tool that we wanted to try and use that we sort of end up scrapping and moving on to the strategy itself. So the strategy itself was essentially we wanted to smooth out a lot of the noise um, across the data. And because it was day by day, we ended up choosing uh, sort of like a MACD, a moving average, crossover and divergence, and then our relative strength index for each instrument. Um, it should be quite a it's not. So basically developing the strategy, we wanted to go over simplicity um, and, and make our decisions based around things that we could feel were relatively predictable. Um, so in that, the strategy was driven by changing mark conditions for a dynamic algorithm performance. And I think that's, that's it. 
at six. So, um, just clarification. Um, uh, okay, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, cool. Um, so just on the other slides there, those um, those graphs we do, uh, they do roll through every day, but um, not the moment. But they all look uh, the same essentially for this, the huge trend is holds true for um, essentially all of the indicators. So that's just what the idea of those graphics was uh, by that. Um, and in terms of uh, strategy um, implementation, um, just sort of, yeah. So uh, if you see that, so in the top there, that's basically what I've got. Um, so progressive mean. Um, and linear models, and so that's essentially where we're um, we're kind of using the the MACD kind of logic there to essentially use that to create a um, that's kind of our um, how we're gonna act, and then what we uh, we kind of evaluate our price using a so we use the moving averages, and then we take the linear fits the moving averages, and we trade on the gradient, and then we kind of um, use the MACD kind of uh, concept to be able to kind of measure momentum and I guess justify uh, what we're doing as an idea of kind of uh, to make sure that we're actually following the trend so we're not necessarily um, buying a downtrend or things like that so that's the idea of that and the code snippets there are commented so um yeah I just go to this yeah sorry I just keep telling you <laughs> well, yeah we're good yeah so um strategy performance so I just put in a um historical uh price, I guess, um, profit and loss chart there, so you can see the performance. So um, based on the scoring metrics, we kind of wanted the algorithm to be fairly consistent considering the standard deviation of our returns, which is like a big impact on, on the score. So what we kind of wanted for was to, uh, for our profits to be consistent and to minimize the losses, because the losses really, uh, we noticed it took a big hit to our, um, to our overall score. Even though we may make more money, it, uh, it was better to maybe reduce some of that uh, returns to get a better, um, a better uh, standard deviation um, just for the scoring system. And that's, I guess, what I'm just trying to uh, visualize there is that we're fairly consistent in that manner of that trend there. And um, yeah, so uh, the recommendation, so as to quickly summarize, so we're taking, we're using the moving average to get a linear regression and treat basically the gradient's positive and negative. So first is that we don't, uh, having a dynamic evaluation, so taking into account uh, previous like wins or losses, I guess, and trying to adjust the algorithm as it goes. Right now, just we do the same thing and it's losing the whole time. Um, and also just performing great analysis. Um, we didn't find any trends in the data, but if there was any, then we have to add that to our algorithm. Uh, yeah, I know. Good question. So, thank you for that. Um, so, moving average. What? Which quantities did you apply moving average to? Prices, returns. Uh, which? Oh, price. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Price, yeah. Price, price, price. Price. Okay. And then. Um, and was it done on a stock by stock basis, or were you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we show up there by the average because when you yeah. have all the instruments together, it's just something like this. So yeah, we did an instrument by instrument. Yeah, yes. and so that's assessed in the code just with the iterative. We apply the same kind of procedure of determining um, how we want to do that, and then the um, the averages we use, we use the total uh, sample as we found that that worked quite well, and then we use that to model. Um, our trend, as we noticed that the reversion on any trends was very minimal, so we decided to be more strict and uh, more strict to the actual trend itself, I guess, rather than presuming for uh, alterations to the trend. We've kind of noticed that there is this trend and we're going to stick with it. So most of our effort identifies, uh, is going into just identifying the correct uh, trend. So would you say that your trading decisions are then based on purely the, the price history of that one stock, regardless of what the other instruments are doing. Yes, right? yes, okay. yes, that is true. It was just, um, and that was what we tried to um, visualize with those uh, other graphics is, is that we found there to be actually low significant correlation between the assets, whether or not that's true, that's what our analysis led us to believe. And so based on our understanding of the data, that's what we decided to go with. That's what I mean. All good for me. It's just quick, what is in 10 seconds? How does MACD model work? 
What about basically, you? so you can, um, from my understanding, do you understand? Yep. So you can, uh, basically, it fits um, the moving average, and there's a signal line that when you cross over the signal line, it gives you a signal line when the weather files. So it's sort of like a smooth exponential moving average of the prices, uh, trailing lag fit. So it's supposed to, I don't know how long it actually did, identify whether or not the files based on it. And we use that as a check. We use that to check on our buying conditions. So we know the trend, but we want to check it that sort of if it's reasonable according to the trend. So we yeah. use the MACD as kind of a verification on our decision. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Max. Uh, before we bring on the next team, we're going to see if we can fix the bike situation. We must two minutes. It's bit too sensitive. Yeah, so just some comments on the video, um, on our presentation, I guess. Uh, so we did lack some specifics, but to be fair, this was somewhat intentional as we didn't want to give too specific of an overview on our trading strategy, both for, I guess, we didn't necessarily want to deep dive into too much specifics uh, as we didn't want to overcomplicate what we were doing. Is that may lead to some miscommunication and potentially harsher questioning. Um, and also doing so might be detrimental to the overall flow of the presentation. Um, technicalities don't necessarily mean that an idea is very smoothly communicated. So we try to just keep it short and sweet and still deliver the main ideas. Yeah, the animations didn't correctly like animate. I think that was due to downloading of the uh, PowerPoint through our submission or something like that. Um, that's not so bad, the idea was still presented. Um, I also did stutter a fair bit, but I was nervous, and that's not so bad. I guess we can work on that. <laughs> um, our teamwork wasn't perfect. However, for a short presentation, that's somewhat to be expected. Like, it's a little bit rushed to some extent, as it's like a time pressure. I also created the code in the slideshow, so... Team cohesion probably suffered a little bit due to this, as not all members may have been completely on the same page in that regard. Um, but in relation to the questions that we were asked, I was a little unsure on what I was being asked in regards to the moving average, um, but that was just because I was trying to figure out the desired answer um, that was like kind of wanted in that response. I wasn't quite sure if it was how we calculated the moving average, for example, like the length of the average, or uh, like there's a lot of kind of things that could be asked like in terms of how a moving average is calculated like ema etc um but lee picked up on it and he just uh, i think wanted to know was it based on the price was it based on the rate of change uh, what was that based on because uh, i noticed that dev or the judge there from sig uh has a big focus on using the rate of change or using percentages or using logarithmic scaling um which we didn't use on our data for a few particular reasons, but we didn't really dive into that in our presentation, which maybe we could have done. And yeah, it was, it's true as well that our trading decisions are based only on the price history of each stock, um, and that's just solely due to a limitation of what we were provided with. I mean, that's all we have is just the price history of each stock. Uh, they were essentially seeing to if we used any correlations between like cross-asset correlation, but we couldn't find any meaningful, any meaningful relationships in terms of that. If they did exist, they weren't obvious. And um, yeah, I was happy with how we did um, and how we performed as a team. Uh, thanks for SIG for putting us into the Crown Resort. Uh, it was a great experience to travel to Sydney and uh, stay the night there. Uh, it was a great networking opportunity and I would definitely encourage anyone to uh, apply or try their and the competition next year and support the UNSW FinTech Club and SIG. Um, it's a really good thing that they're doing. And uh, I'm a part of the UQ FinTech Society actually. So we do a similar thing, but at the University of Queensland. And um, we'll probably be putting on a similar thing like this next year, hopefully, um, uh, maybe with a few improvements. So uh, we'll be hopefully hosting that this coming year alongside a hackathon. So. Uh, keep your eye out for that. We're working on it. Even if it doesn't come this year, it'll be ready for the following. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for all that stuff. And I hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful maybe, or, yeah.
Oh yeah, no, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>